All right, so let's start with the big story that we are tracking on Vyond at this hour. But India's massive repatriation exercise is now underway. And this is the largest evacuation exercise ever undertaken by India in its history. It involves ships, naval ships and public carriers as well. Now, in the first 14 days, the government intends to bring back about 14,000 people who have been stranded across the globe because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, here's the plan for day one. At least about 2,300 Indian nationals will be brought back today. The first batch of arrivals will be from the United Arab Emirates. The arrival of two flights, however, has been delayed. The Riyadh Kozikode flight will arrive tomorrow, while the Dubai Kochi flight will be arriving on the 9th of May. Some departures have also been pushed back. The Delhi San Francisco flight will be departing on the 8th instead of its scheduled time today. Now, the Mumbai-London flight has also been delayed by about a day. And to get us more insights into what is happening in this repatriation operation, we're joined in by Vyond's Sidan Sibyl, who's joining us over the phone line. Good morning to you, Sidan. What is the latest in terms of this repatriation process that is being undertaken? Well, uh, yes, Mohammed, today is the day one of uh, India's massive repatriation exercise, the, the biggest uh, repatriation exercise in the history of independent India. India is expected to uh, get back 1.92 lakh people in the first phase itself. This is uh, more than the people India got uh, back from Kuwait during the Gulf War in 1990s. But talking about day one, uh, the focus, of course, clearly remains the Gulf and in the Gulf also, focus remains on UAE, where a number of blue-collar workers are stranded. Uh, we know there are, of course, uh, now confirmed reports that few flights will be de delayed, but that is a part of uh, the process because, uh, remember, this is a mammoth exercise, a lot of coordination is happening and also reaching out to the Indian citizens who have registered for for repatriation. In fact, in the Gulf itself, I can tell you, Mohammed, that there are approximately 3 lakh people who have registered uh, uh, so that they can uh, come back to India, but there are strict protocols when it comes to coming back to India. First, of course, it's a paid service. Uh, when it comes to the Gulf, the flat rate is 15,000 for UK. It is 15,000 for US. It is 1 lakh. Talking about the Gulf, uh, the people have to uh, be screened first. Uh, I can tell you that the UAE government itself, on its own cost, is screening the Indian citizens who would like to come back to India. Mm -hmm. And uh, once they board the flight, they will be, before boarding the flight, they will be given the food. When they reach here, they will be quarantined for 14 days. And they have to download and keep, um, keep the Arogya Setu app. This is another mandatory uh, right. thing they have to do. And after the 14-day quarantine period, only then they will be released and they can go to wherever they want to go. Absolutely, indeed. At this point of time, Siddhant, if we are to understand it right, in the first week, about 14,000 people will be brought back. The target we're given to understand is about 1,92,000 people. So what is the timeline that we're looking at to get all of these Indians stranded abroad to be brought back home? Well, actually, there is no timeline, but given the task involved, given the number of people, uh, you can imagine the numbers, just three lakhs from the Gulf. So, so imagine uh, across the globe, it must be re really high numbers. I can give you like maybe perhaps four to five lakh people who have mm -hmm. already registered to come back. We really don't know how many people are going to come back, but this entire exercise, given the uh, task and how huge this exercise is, it can take roughly to two to five months to get back all these people who would like to come uh, to uh, to India. And in the first stage, of course, uh, uh, the focus is Gulf, but it will be expanded uh, from right. New Zealand to Philippines to Japan to to any country uh, where India is last stranded. And I can tell you the situation is like in even Somalia, there are five citizens who have registered to come back to India. All right, we'll have to leave it there. Thank you very much indeed, Siddhant, for joining us and getting us all those insights. We'll, of course, come back to you as more details emerge in the story. Meanwhile, in the last 24 hours, India has crossed the 50,000 mark in terms of the confirmed coronavirus infections. Overnight, more than 3,500 new cases have been reported from across India with 89 related fatalities. The mortality rate from the infection now stands at about 3.3%. India is the 14th country in the world to have crossed the figure of 50,000 infections. The state of Maharashtra, of course, remains the worst affected, where almost about 80% of the cases are coming in from India's financial capital, Mumbai. Now, Maharashtra has more than 16,000 cases, which is more than the next three worst affected states of 
the national capital new delhi gujarat and madhya pradesh the daily number of new infections has been on the rise yesterday india had recorded a jump of almost about 3000 cases the last 10000 cases very interestingly have been recorded in just the last 3 days now this past week has recorded the highest surge in the number of cases in a day across the country this has been described as india's deadliest week so far more than 576 deaths have been recorded in just the last 4 days now the graph on your screen shows the surge that's taking place in the number of cases while india has also recorded one of its worst weeks since the pandemic has broken out since early march now this also comes at a very crucial juncture when india has entered into its third phase of the lockdown and restrictions are being eased across the states many states in india So meanwhile as the COVID-19 pandemic has gripped the nation there is another tragedy that has emerged from Visakhapatnam where a chemical gas leak at the LG polymers factory has been reported in the southern Indian city of Visakhapatnam that has claimed the lives of at least about 7 people including a child the more than 800 people are said to be in the vicinity of the place where the gas leak took place and they've not been taken to hospitals after they complained of a burning sensation in their eyes and severe breathing difficulties the many people who inhaled the toxic fumes were seen falling unconscious on the road the andhra pradesh chief minister jagan mohan reddy is expected to visit visakhapatnam sometime later in the day today and the king george hospital where the patients are currently being treated is the place where he'll be heading to Meanwhile authorities claim that they have evacuated three adjoining villages first responders including firemen rushed to the spot officials claim that the leak has been brought under control at this point of time the precise circumstances leading up to the leak are not known door to door service are being conducted to assess the damage the factory at the center of this gas leak is owned by the south korean battery maker LG Chemicals and the company at this point of time has still not commented as to what led to this deadly leak